Tonight, Pennsylvania Republican Senate candidate Dave McCormick is warning the sudden rise of his opponent, Kathy Barnett, could spell doom for Republicans come the general election. She's been tested once before uh, in the last uh, two years where she ran for Congress and lost by 20 points. The stakes could not be higher. And a super PAC backing McCormick is now attacking Barnett really for the first time in a new ad saying voters can't trust her. This as Republicans like former President Donald Trump are basically stunned and panicking that Barnett is in this now in a statistical tie with Trump's preferred candidate, Dr. Mehmet Oz, and also with Dave McCormick. Out front now, Scott Jennings, former senior advisor to Mitch McConnell and also former special assistant to President George W. Bush. And Jonathan Tamari, national political reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, who's been following this very closely. Uh, Jonathan, so the primary is Tuesday. It is clear Republicans in the Commonwealth were caught off guard by Barnett's late surge. So how nervous is this making them, though? Well, it's making the two leading campaigns uh, of, of Mehmet Oz and David McCormick very nervous because she's in position to pass them after they've each spent tens and tens of millions of dollars. But nationally, it's a little less certain. The National Republican Party is not stepping in here to try to stop her. They're not picking favorites. They don't know, I don't think, how strong or weak a candidate she would be because, as you just referred to, nobody has really vetted her very closely, including her opponents, including national figures. I talked to a Washington Republican this week who just described her as a gigantic question mark. So right now they're kind of watching and it's so late they don't really have much choice but to let the process play out and see where things fall on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, it really couldn't get later, Scott. I mean, one question Republicans have about Barnett, which is basically all questions. I mean, it's amazing how unvetted this, they have left her through this campaign. But one question is just how deep and real her ties are even to Pennsylvania. She was asked about that today by a conservative, uh, yesterday by a conservative radio host. And here's how she responded. Did they vet the guy from Connecticut, McCormick, coming in? Did they vet the New Jersey Oz coming in? These people have very high negatives. Why would you take people with very high negatives in the Republican primary into the general and think you're going to win? Scott, what do you think of that and just this whole thing? Well, it, it's a total mess. And uh, I've talked to a lot of Republicans who are involved over there, and really nobody knows what's going to happen. I, I will tell you, as an old political operative, I've seen a lot of races, though, where you have two people that are considered to be front runners. And you have to have that in this race, beating the crap out of each other for months and months and months. And it opens up a lane because people get tired of the negativity. They, you know, they, they hate what they hear about everybody. And somebody can surge late. And it's really too late to do anything about it. You mentioned that the National Republicans have let it go. Well, what could they do? You know, we're just right. a few days away. Uh, and so, and so um, no one's really quite sure how this is going to turn out. And for Donald Trump, by the way, who's backing Dr. Oz, uh, you know, he's even hedging in his statements. He put out a statement saying she probably couldn't win in November, but he said nice things about her. And now there's reporting tonight that he may be considering uh, endorsing the gubernatorial candidate that she's been kind of palling around with. So even he's hedging a little bit, wondering, you know, how to maintain his one loss record uh, ratio <laughs> as the Pennsylvania primary approaches. Total mess and uh, and not a lot of answers right now. Yeah, I mean, and his statement was, I mean, like a classic, like maybe if I have to like her later, uh, you can count on it, I guess. It was, it, was a, it was a pretty classic one. But Jonathan, speaking of endorsements, Senator Ted Cruz came to campaign with Dave McCormick today, which is interesting because, again, he's not the first Trump ally to kind of break with the former president in throwing their support behind a different candidate than Trump is backing. Uh, is it clear to you yet how big of a factor Donald Trump is with Republican voters in Pennsylvania for this race? It's not clear. It's, it's really mixed uh, evidence because, as you said, he's endorsed them at Oz, and Oz has spent a lot of money, yet he's not been able to pull away with this thing. It certainly hasn't been decisive. It hasn't been powerful enough to suddenly seal the deal, or else we wouldn't be here talking about right. Kathy Barnett. Um, the question is, in a race that could come down to a couple of percentage points, is his endorsement worth that? Is it worth one, two, three percentage points? And that's what I think we're all waiting to see. But, you know, there are a lot of questions about Mehmet Oz. In fact, there were a lot of negatives built up on him before Trump came in. So it was unclear how much he'd be able to move the dial once a lot of people already had a negative impression of him. Yeah. And it's got a similar thing ish is playing out in Georgia as well. You've got Mike Pence is going to be campaigning 
alongside Georgia Governor Brian Kemp in, in his reelection bid, right before that state's Republican primary. And Trump essentially at this point hates Kemp because he certified Trump's 2020 election loss. We've seen that criticism over, over and over. Trump's backing the other candidate, former Senator David Perdue, in that governor's race. What do you make of this Pence versus Trump dynamic there? Well, it, it makes a lot of sense for Pence to show up here and try to and try to uh, take a victory lap with Brian Kemp. They essentially have the same position uh, on the 2020 election, which right. displeased Donald Trump. So it makes sense for Pence to be in for Kemp. And by the way, you know, it's not like it's a close race like we have in Pennsylvania. Kemp's obviously uh, uh, running circles around Purdue and may end up uh, avoiding a runoff altogether, which uh, when this race started out, it wasn't quite sure how that was going to go. So smart move by Pence to get in and take a victory lap there uh, with Brian Kemp. And, and this is going to be one of the primaries where Trump certainly has uh, egg on his face. There won't be many, but, but this is going to be one of them. Uh, and if you're Mike Pence and you're looking at running against possibly Donald Trump for president in 2024, you need to be able to show people that, hey, there's a way to run as a Republican in this country, not go down uh, Trump's road on the 2020 election and still maintain your conservative credentials, still maintain uh, your ability to influence Republican voters. This is a good way to do it in Georgia, standing next to Brian Kemp. And you know, Mike Pence knows that, right? Of course, right? Like he knows that he knows the movie's making, and he's, he's very clearly okay with making that break, making that statement, and he's playing the odds pretty well in this one. It's good to see you, Scott. It's good to see you, Jonathan. Thank you very much.